everybody, it's Lisa and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be a bit different from what I normally do on this channel. I normally just stick to talking about books for the majority, um, but today I'm going to be talking about things that I loved in 2019 that were not books. So we have a few different things I'm going to be talking about, makeup, skincare, music, TV, lots of different things, but I just wanted to film this because I really like a lot of other things outside of books. Imagine that. I have a personality outside of reading books. But I really wanted to just talk about it because I really like a lot of these things and I'm pretty passionate about like makeup and skincare and music and things like that. So I really just wanted to kind of bring that type of thing to my channel. I also thought this would be kind of a cool thing for me to look back on in the future. Um, things that I loved throughout a certain year or like music I was listening to in a certain year. So I'm very excited to film this and I know it is a bit different, but hopefully you will still watch and enjoy. But yeah, let's just get right into it because I have lots of things to talk about. So the first category I'm gonna be talking about is makeup and skincare. So let's just get right into it with the first product. I actually have kind of two that kind of go together. So I'll just mention them at the same time. And that is the Too Faced Born This Way Foundation and the Born This Way Concealer. So the foundation, I have the shade Swan and the concealer, I have the shade Swan. But I absolutely love these. The foundation is like the perfect foundation for any skin type, in my opinion. I think it's very versatile. I used to have really, really oily skin um, and I still do. I still kind of have like combo skin but I've definitely gotten a bit more under control. Um, but before, when I was like super, super oily, I would just use like mattifying products, matte primer, matte foundation, matte concealer, matte powder, like everything. I just wanted to keep my shine like completely away. But I feel like the more I've gotten it under control, the more I've kind of wanted to switch to more natural looking products. So the foundation and the concealer are both pretty like a natural finish. It's not like super matte or dewy or anything. It's just sort of in the middle. And I really, really like that. It's a very natural finish, but I've been wearing this foundation so much this year. And also this concealer, I can't remember if I actually got this concealer last year or this year, but basically these two I've been using so much this year. Also, this concealer is huge. There's so much product in here. I think the concealer is like $27, which it's a bit more pricey for concealer. I mean, I feel like it's pretty average for um, a bit higher end products, but it lasts forever. I've had this concealer for a really, really long time. Well, not like so long where it's disgusting, but I've had it for a while and it lasts so long. Um, it also kind of works as like a foundation or if you just want to quickly like put coverage all over your face, it's perfect for that as well. It kind of has a big like doe foot applicator, which I really like. I don't know why well, I get to do the beauty guru thing, except I don't think that works with my camera or at all, but it's kind of like a big doe foot applicator and I really like that. You can kind of get a lot evenly spread across your whole face. I just really like these products and would definitely recommend um, for really any skin type. I feel like they would work for anybody. The next product I'm not going to talk too much about because it's really not that exciting. It's the uh, Soap and Glory One Heck of a Blot Primer. So this is a primer that, <laughs> obviously. So this primer is really great because it is kind of a shine stopping primer. So I kind of put it in my T-zone and just areas that I tend to get more oily and it kind of helps block out the shine. Um, but it also is kind of pore minimizing, not like as much as like a, um, like a more of those silicone pore filling primers are, but it still does it a little bit. But the thing that I like about this primer is that it isn't a silicone pore filling primer. I feel like those types of primers are really good if you are oily and you want to stop the shine but this does a good job of it as well without being that kind of silicone feeling. I don't know, I don't love those primers. They make me feel like greasy almost. I don't know, I just don't really like them. I don't like the feeling of them, but this one is not like that at all. It's more just like, I don't know how to describe it. It feels more like a the texture of a moisturizing primer, but not moisturizing. It's not the most moisturizing because it is trying to stop shine, but it isn't that silicone feel, which I really like about it. So yeah, I would definitely recommend if you are somebody with oily skin um, and you don't like the feel of the silicone primers. I mean, I don't hate the silicone feeling type of primers, but they're just not my favorite. I definitely prefer something like this, where it just feels like a normal liquid primer, but is still helping to combat your shine. All right, so the last like makeup-y thing that I have to talk about is this lipstick. It is the Urban Decay Vice Lipstick in Fuel 2.0. Um, I don't know if they still sell this. If they do, I will try to link everything down below. So 
hopefully if you are intrigued I will be able to link it down below but I really like this lipstick it's kind of just like the perfect brownie nude um, I really really like it I think it's just kind of my perfect nude shade um, it is kind of on the warmer side but I feel like I tend to wear warmer eyeshadow looks anyway so it kind of works for anything that I tend to wear. I also really like the bullet lipsticks. I love that these kind of came back because the liquid lipstick phase was fun but oh my god are those things drying on your lips. I am so much more about having moisturized lips like I just don't want to have something that makes my lips feel so dry and get them all chapped. I would much prefer something like this that is a bit more um, moisturizing. Um, I also feel like I've kind of gone into the more glossy look this year, so this kind of adds a bit of shine, but without being like sticky like a gloss, so I definitely would recommend um, the Vice lipsticks. I think the technical like type of lipsticks this is is a cream. Um, I'm sure they have matte ones, but I would recommend the cream because they're not super, super matte and drying, um, but they aren't also sticky either, so I really like that, and I've been wearing this lipstick a ton this year. So the next product I have is a cleansing balm, and that is from the brand First. I believe this is like a Target exclusive brand, but it could be sold at other places. And this is the Day Dissolve Cleansing Balm with Eucalyptus Oil and Vitamin E. So I really like this. I was someone that used makeup wipes every time I had makeup on. That's what I would use to take my makeup off, and then I would obviously go in with a cleanser and everything like that, but... Makeup wipes don't always get uh, all your makeup off. Some of the makeup wipes out there are pretty good, but majority of makeup wipes do not get a lot of the makeup off, or there's always some still left on your skin. But I find that with the cleansing balm, I get a lot more makeup off with this than with makeup wipes. Um, obviously, it is a bit more work than just using a makeup wipe, and I still use makeup wipes, but... Um, I find that this just gets a lot more makeup off before I go in with my cleansing and my toning and all that. I just take like like a dime to a quarter size, depends on how much makeup I'm wearing that day, run them my fingers underwater and just kind of massage it into my skin to get the makeup off. And I have been really, really loving it. It's been something I've used kind of more recently. I think I got this like a few months ago. I actually think I showed it in a reading vlog like really early on in my channel. Probably one of my first, if not my first reading vlog, but I only started using it within the past few months, but I really, really love it. But I would definitely recommend checking out the Verse brand. They're sold at Target. Um, I think they might be like a Target brand. I'm not, again, entirely sure. But the great thing about this brand is that everything is under $20. So I think this cleansing balm is $17.99. I think. But yeah, that's what's great about it is everything is under $20 because skincare can get expensive. Things can be expensive. But I think the great thing about this is that these products, well, at least this one, the one that I've tried is really, really good and really, really affordable as well. I've also tried their lip oil, which was really good as well. Not my like favorite lip product that I've ever tried, but I did really enjoy it. So I would definitely recommend checking out the brand first. Um, but I really like this cleansing balm and I think it does a really good job of removing my makeup, which is the point. So the next product I actually don't have with me. Um, I used it all up and threw away the jar. I thought I was keeping it for some reason and I was keeping it for this video, but then I couldn't remember, so I threw it away and now I don't have it. But that product is the First Aid Beauty Coconut Water Cream Moisturizer. I had it written down because it's kind of a mouthful and I always forget what it's called. But I love First Aid Beauty. I think they are a great skincare brand. They're not, you know, crazy expensive. They are a bit more pricey, but they aren't super, super expensive um, in the grand scheme of things. And I love their products. Their products last so long. Um, and really work for my skin. And this moisturizer I think is great. It's like a gel consistency, so it's really good if you have oilier skin um, because you don't want anything too thick, um, like a lotion type of moisturizer. You don't want to put that all over your face if you have oily skin, so I thought that this was the perfect gel moisturizer. I really, really enjoyed it. Clearly, I used up a whole jar, but I really liked it, and it's like 30-something dollars, but it lasted me like months. It lasted me forever. So you definitely get, you know, your money's worth with this type of product. Um, so I would definitely recommend if you're looking for a moisturizer that if you have oilier skin, basically if you have like oily combo skin, recommend all of these things for you. But yeah, definitely love that moisturizer. I definitely love First Aid Beauty as a brand and can't wait to hopefully buy another uh, coconut water cream in the future because I ran out and I'm sad about it. So hopefully I get another one soon. All right, so now I'm going to get into my favorite music of 2019. So I listen to a lot of music. Music is something that I am very, very into and very like obsessed with. And there was a lot of great music that came out this year. 
And I definitely want to mention some music that came out in 2018 that I kind of just started listening to this year. Um, but I'm going to try and go through this quickly because I have a lot of things to talk about. So just like some songs or like general artists this year that I was really loving. Five Seconds Summer. I mean, I've been loving them since like 2013. So surprise, surprise. But they came out with songs called Teeth and Easier this year. And I really, really love them. Is that all they came out with this year? Five Seconds Summer is kind of a band that I've been obsessed with since like I said, 2013. So anything they do, I am going to support and listen to and be obsessed with. So I had to mention them. Also, Harry Styles has been releasing some new music. When I'm filming this, his album is going to be out tomorrow. So that would have been on this list if I waited one more day to film it. I probably will mention it in my favorites video next year. So don't even worry about it. The songs that he has released from the album so far, I'm loving. Um, Lights Up, Watermelon Sugar, and Adore You. I adore <laughs> and I'm so excited to hear the album tomorrow. I love Harry Styles but if you aren't loving Harry Styles you're doing something wrong so obviously I had to mention him. Another artist that I was really loving this year was Conan Gray. Um, I kind of feel like I saw him a lot on like Twitter. He tweets a lot of funny things and I just kept seeing him pop up in my timeline and I think his song Crush Culture became pretty popular so I finally listened to it and then I just started listening to a lot of his music and there's definitely still some songs that he has that I haven't heard before, so I'm very excited to give his music more of a listen, but the songs I have heard from him, I really, really love. So yeah, definitely had to mention him. And the last artist I have to mention is one that I never thought I'd be mentioning, and that's BTS. Who would have thought? I'm not like a stan yet. I'm like not letting myself become a full-blown stan because I know if I like invest too much time into like watching their videos or listening to their music, I will become a full-on stan and I'm just like it's not that I don't want to it's just that I'm not like mentally prepared to become obsessed with something else <laughs> I get so obsessed with things so fast I'm just like scared to let myself get obsessed with things but um BTS they have a couple songs I really enjoyed boy with love with Halsey was one of my top songs on Spotify um, by the way I have I'll have my um Spotify like my top songs 2019 playlist linked down below if you're that curious about the music I was loving this year, but that song was in one of my like top songs of the year, so clearly I listened to it a lot. They have some other songs as well that I liked. The one with um, Love, is that how you say his name? L-A-U-V. Make It Right. I think that's what it's called. Yes, that's another one that I really like, um, and there's a few others that I've listened to that I really enjoy, so maybe next year I will be a full-blown stan, but as of right now, just a couple of songs to mention by them. Now I'm going to just kind of talk about a few albums that I loved this year. So two that came out last year that I really like started listening to this year was Narrated For You, I believe that's what it's called. Yes, Narrated For You by Alec Benjamin and uh, Golden Hour by Casey Musgraves. Again, I know this came out last year, but I started listening to them this year and became like obsessed with them. Alec Benjamin, I definitely think is an artist that I'm just going to always like listen to every time he releases a new song. I love it. I think he's so fantastic. So definitely going to listen to him again in the future. Um, Casey Musgraves, I know, has other albums, but Golden Hour is just, it's so good. It's chef's kiss. So I told you I had a lot of music to talk about, so there's still more. Now we have a few albums that came out this year that I wanted to mention. So the first album is Thank You Next by Ariana Grande. I sadly was not into Sweetener by her. Um, I really like Ariana Grande. I like her music. I've been listening to her albums since her first one and I was really disappointed in Sweetener, but then she released Thank You Next and I was like, yes, this is what I wanted. But yeah, I really enjoyed it. I haven't listened to it in a while, but I know when it first came out, I like couldn't stop listening to it. Some of my favorites that I want to mention is Fake Smile, uh, Bad Idea, what else did I like? It's been a while since I've listened to them. I think I liked it in my head too. I don't know. There's lots of bops on this album. Seven Rings also was one of those songs that when I first heard it, I was like, I don't know how I feel about this. And then the more I listened to it, I was like, yep, this is good. This is a bop. Another album that I really enjoyed this year was Stranger Songs by Ingrid Michaelson. She created a whole album that was inspired by Stranger Things. Now, we all know I am a Stranger Things stan. If you're new to my channel, maybe you don't, but if you've been here for a little while, you probably know. I like Stranger Things. So when I saw that she was releasing an album entirely inspired by Stranger Things, I was like, this is going to be great. I'm so excited. And let me tell you, it's great. I listened to it so much. Um, I think Missing You from the album was my top song of 2019. It beat out Taylor Swift, which just, I think, shows how much I listened to that song and this album. Hearing the inspiration 
for the songs and like how they connect to Stranger Things, but also to her life. Um, I really, really enjoyed. I think that's like part of the fun is like figuring out like, okay, like what moment in Stranger Things inspired this song? So obviously one of my favorite songs from the album is Missing You. It was a bop. It was a single before the album came out and I listened to it so much and then the album came out and I continued to listen to it. So that's one of my faves. I also love Hate You. Um, it's kind of an emotional like ballad, but it's about Steve Harrington. So naturally I was like, it's great. I love it. I also love Jealous and Best Friend. Best Friend is so cute and a bop and I love it. Definitely would recommend checking out this album even if you don't like Stranger Things. Um, it's still really good. Still has some great songs but if you like Stranger Things definitely recommend checking it out because it's really cool to listen to the songs and to kind of see how they connect to the show. Two more albums to talk about and then we're moving on from music. This is going to be like the biggest section in the video. Okay so the next album is Happiness Begins by the Jones Brothers. Obviously, I'm mentioning this. I used to love the Jones Brothers when I was younger. I was like eight years old and a stan. I was obsessed with them. I literally thought I was going to marry Joe Jonas. When Joe Jonas and Taylor Swift dated, I was like, my parents, this is the best thing ever. And then when they broke up, I was like, oh no, my parents, they're divorcing. <laughs> the fact that they came back in 2019 was one thing, but the fact that they came back with an album that I really, really love was so great. And I was really happy to love the album as much as I do. Let's go through, name some favorites. I mean, Only Human, obviously, a bop. Um, I think Strangers is probably one of my favorites off of the album. I also love Hesitate and Roller Coaster and um, Don't Throw It Away might also be one of my favorites. Um, there's lots of great songs on the album and I'm just so happy they're back. Um, I recently saw them, when did I see them? I think it was like November 24th. Um, I got to see them perform live in Boston. I was living my best life and it was so much fun and it was like one of those like bucket list moments because I had been wanting to see them since I was like eight years old. So that was really great and I'm just so happy they're back and absolutely loved that album this year. Okay, you knew it was coming. If you've seen any of my videos before, you probably knew this was coming. I'm not going to talk about it too much because we all know how much I love Taylor Swift, but Lover. Lover came out this year. And I loved it. Lover is Taylor Swift's most recent album, her seventh album, and it was so good. I'm so excited too because she's doing a tour next year. She's doing like a festival tour and she's only coming to two different places in the U.S. And one of them happens to be Gillette Stadium, which is where, where I would go to see her anyway. That's where, I'm not really from where Gillette Stadium is, but that's like kind of where I'm from. Um, and I am so excited that I get to see her next year. I'm gonna cry. But yeah, Lover is so good. I don't know how she did it, but every song on the album is so good. The only song I don't love is me. And even then I'm like mad at myself that I don't love it. I like get mad when other people say they don't like it, but that yet I don't love it as much as other songs on the album. But every other song on the album is so good. I had such a hard time picking a favorite song from this album for so long because I was just like, they're all so good. But my favorite is definitely Death by a Thousand Cuts. I get so emotional listening to that song. The first like week the album was out, I cried every single time I heard that song. And I still do cry sometimes when I listen to it, but it's not every time anymore. But there's so many good songs on this album. I can't even name like a top few because I love every single one. But Death by a Thousand Cuts, definitely my favorite. That is going to wrap up the music section. I know I've talked way too long about music, but it's just like one of my favorite things ever. Um, and I wanted to make sure I mentioned everything that I was loving this year. So let's just get into the next category, which is TV shows and movies. I only have a few things to mention because I'm not like a huge TV show or movie watcher. Um, but I did have a few things I wanted to mention as you could have maybe predicted from something I said earlier, but Stranger Things season three had to be mentioned. So Stranger Things, one of my favorite shows, if not my favorite show of all time. Um, I absolutely love it. And they came out with their third season this year and it was so good. I think, I don't want to say it's my favorite. I feel like I say each season is my favorite after I finish each season. Um, but the thing with, I feel like season one and two is two was still, it was good. I really liked season two, but I feel like it was very similar to season one. Whereas season three, I feel like was quite different. I feel like we 
there were different things going on with like the upside down and the monsters and all of that. I feel like it was pretty different from other seasons. But also we got introduced to some great characters. We got Robin this season who is probably one of my new favorite characters from the show. We got Alexi who is a precious angel. And then we also got to see more of Lucas's sister Erica. Um, you can't spell America without Erica. Absolutely loved seeing more of Erica this season and I just, I don't know, I just really enjoyed the season. The only thing that I didn't love about season three was Nancy and Jonathan's storyline. That's like the only thing. I feel like they're such a power duo that I was like expecting a lot more from their storyline. I mean it was fine. It just wasn't like my favorite. I was definitely very into the Scoops Troop storyline. Probably my favorite out of the whole show. Um, I hope in the next season though Dustin gets to hang out with his friends that are his age a little bit more. As much as I love the Steve and Dustin dynamic because they're like my favorite characters, um, I do wish that Dustin got to hang out with his friends a little bit more. So maybe next season we'll get to see more of that. But yeah, I loved the season. I love this show so much. It brings me so much joy even though I sobbed for like the whole like last half hour of the last episode of season three. I don't want to talk about it. It does bring me a lot of joy and it makes me so happy and I love it so much so obviously I had to mention it. Another show that I started watching and finished watching this year was Game of Thrones. So when I say Game of Thrones is a favorite this year, I mean seasons one through seven. The last season was um it was something but I actually like binge watched the entire show in the span of two weeks, I don't know if that's something I should admit and be proud of or embarrassed, but I did. I would started season one like months before uh, the final season was going to be starting and then I kind of took a break and then wanted to get caught up in time for the last season and it was like less than three weeks away. So I binged watched the whole show and got caught up in time for the last season, which was disappointing, but the rest of the show wasn't. So yeah, I definitely understand why people are so obsessed with this show because I became obsessed. The characters were great. It was just so interesting. So many moments where I was like so shocked and I was sobbing. So many things were happening in the show. Um, I absolutely loved it. And may I just say, the best part of the last season was Arya Stark and that moment. You know the moment. I hope if you've seen the show you know what I'm talking about. That was my favorite part of the last season. I definitely want to maybe pick up the books at some point, but the books kind of intimidate me. They're kind of large. But um, maybe since I've seen the show, it'd be maybe a little easier to read them. But yeah, definitely wanted to mention the show because it quickly became a new favorite for me this year. So now a couple of movies to mention. Um, I watched Pride and Prejudice, the 2005 version with Keira Knightley for the first time uh, and back in July. I actually watched it because I used Pride and Prejudice for the book to movie adaptation prompt for the Reading Rush readathon. So I watched it for the first time then and I absolutely loved it. I still haven't rewatched it since watching it that first time but I think about it all the time and I absolutely loved it and I totally understand why people like talk about it all the time. I really liked Pride and Prejudice the book as well. It definitely was one of my favorite books that I read this year but I really liked the movie as well. I still have yet to watch the um, TV adaptation that was done in like the 90s I think. Um, I haven't watched that yet but I really enjoyed the movie and definitely need to give it a rewatch because it was so good. And then another movie that I watched which is a more of a recent movie because it's a holiday movie and that's Klaus? Claus? Klaus. I think it's Klaus. But it's on Netflix and it's a holiday movie and it's so cute. I absolutely loved it. I watched it like last week and I'm putting it in my favorites video which I think just means how much I absolutely adored it. I definitely think that's going to be one of those movies that gets into the rotation of Christmas movies I want to watch every year. I absolutely loved it. I thought it was so cute. It was so funny. Um, it also made me quite emotional. There were moments where I was crying because of a cute moment. I was crying because of an emotional moment but it also made me laugh and was just really cute. So if you're looking for a Christmassy movie, I don't know when this video is going to go up so even if it's after Christmas, you should still watch it because it was really great. Definitely like one of my favorite like more recent holiday movies that have come out within the past couple of years. Uh, definitely a favorite and definitely wanted to mention it. Okay, we are nearing the end of this video so we're just going to kind of get into the miscellaneous category. Things that I just wanted to kind of throw in here that are a bit more random and didn't really fit into another category. The first thing I wanted to mention is my bullet journal with the oddly spaced stickers. There were more stickers but some have fallen off so 
just ignore how oddly spaced they are. So I got into journaling or bullet journaling this year. I did my first spread back in July and I have been doing it every month since and I'm going to continue to do it into the new year. I absolutely love this. I think the best thing about this is that it's so customizable because every page is just an empty page and you get to kind of do what you want to do with your journal and make it customizable to you. I mainly use this as a reading journal, so I'm able to kind of create pages that have to do with books, my TBRs, books I've read, um, the amount of pages I read every day, but I also use it to kind of plan out um, YouTube videos and Instagram ideas. I also use it as a bit of a planner, so I have like monthly and like weekly spreads where I can kind of plan out everything I need to do. It's just so great because you can kind of create your own custom planner to what you need. I like to be creative even if I'm not like the best at like drawing and everything. I do like being kind of more artistic and creative so this is kind of like the perfect thing for me to do. Um, so yeah it's a creative outlet and it also is a planner so I can get my my life together. It's just great and I would definitely recommend bullet journaling if it's something you think would be useful for you. Now I have two podcasts to mention which is so weird because last year at this time I was just getting into a podcast I'm going to mention right now, and I never really listened to podcasts. I was more of like the, oh, I'm sitting in silence. I'm either going to listen to music or watch some YouTube videos type of person. But now we have podcasts and audiobooks into the mix, but I have a couple of podcasts that I want to mention. So the first one that I've been listening to all year, I actually got into it kind of at the end of December last year, and that is My Favorite Murder which is hosted by Karen Kugarev and Georgia Hardstark. And basically this podcast is these two women who kind of, they're really hilarious. They're so funny. They add um, such a layer of comedy to a podcast that would be just sort of depressing because they're talking about different murders and crimes and different things like that that have happened um, throughout history. My favorite thing about the podcast is that they're so respectful um, about the stories that they're telling about the people who were affected and they also like are so quick to correct themselves if they make a mistake in a podcast episode they will quickly correct themselves in the next episode they have a thing called corrections corner um i actually am not like completely caught up i'm still like in podcast episodes from like 2017 because i started from the beginning um so i don't know if they still do that i'm sure they do but they correct themselves if they make a mistake but they try their best to be respectful as well but they also bring such a fun element to it they add a layer of humor so it's weird you wouldn't think to be laughing as much as you do when listening to a murder themed podcast, but you do. Um, I absolutely love it. I love them. And I would definitely recommend this podcast if like true crime and that type of thing interests you. So yeah, I definitely needed to mention this podcast because it's a podcast I got into like at the very, very beginning of the year and I absolutely loved it and it's been something that I've been listening to consistently all year. So I have another podcast to mention, which I did not plan on this, but one got started recently and I wanted to mention it. So Ariel from the channel Ariel Bissette and Raylene, who also had a username channel, but she doesn't really use it anymore, but they started a podcast called Books Unbound and I love it. Obviously I make videos talking about books. I watch videos talking about books. So obviously listening to a podcast where people talk about books is right up my alley. They kind of just every week kind of talk about books that they're currently reading, um, books they recently bought, and then they have um, a section where they have some really like random recommendations that like people send in things that they're looking for, books that they feel like reading, and Ariel and Raylene give their recommendations. And it's just super fun and super relaxing. Um, I also just love Ariel and Raylene's like friendship and hearing them talk about books. I don't know. It's just a great podcast. So if you want to find a bookish podcast to listen to, definitely would recommend this one. And the last thing that I wanted to mention, I feel like I should mention it, is the fact that I'm filming this video right now. I started a YouTube channel this year and it's been something that I've been wanting to do forever. I have wanted to start a YouTube channel since like probably like my freshman year of high school and um, that was 2013. 2012, 2013. So it's been a while. It's been a long time coming and I finally just decided to do it this year. I have been wanting to do this for so long and there was really no reason for me to wait any longer. So I definitely needed to mention this because this is one of my favorite things that I have started doing this year and I've made so many great friends through making these videos and through this community and everything and I just felt like it was such a big part of the second half of my year and I definitely wanted to mention it. Didn't want to get too like mushy and emotional, but it definitely was something that was like a favorite of this year. Probably my favorite thing that I did this year. So yes, 
definitely had to mention that and I'm so so grateful to be filming a video right now. I'm so happy I decided to finally start the channel and yeah. So those are all of my favorite things from 2019. We have had quite the year. <laughs> Let me know down below uh, any of your favorite things from 2019. Doesn't have to be necessarily things that I talked about, but let me know a favorite thing that you either did this year or a favorite thing that you discovered this year. Just let me know. So thank you if you have made it this far into the video. I know I kind of went on some tangents about music and lots of other things, and I know this is a bit different for my channel, but I really appreciate it if you watched and made it to the end. But that is going to complete this video. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe down below if you haven't already. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.